ocean is one of the less studied but more important ecosystems of our planet. People spend most of their time on land, so they tend to forget about the importance of the ocean. Oceans provide us with most of the oxygen we breathe, they provide us with food and medicinal substances, and they help stabilize the Earth's climate. We, the Science and Technology Center of the Eugenides Foundation, are here at Calitheas Marina to visit the oceanographic schooner Tara and speak with the scientists on board. We want to learn about the research on the ocean and how the human activities have an effect on them. My name is uh, Baki Giancarlo. I work uh, as a chemical oceanographer in Pisa at the CNR National Research, Research Council in Italy. And uh, here on board, I'm the chief scientist for, uh, this, uh, for this leg between Qatar and Athens, and also one of the scientific operators on board. Starting from this mission, your current mission's name is Trek, traversing European coastlines. So what's so special about the coasts? Why do we study the coasts in order to learn things about the ocean? Well, coastlines are uh, the interface between land and sea. So um, they are like the first barriers also for everything that uh, happens on land and goes in the sea. They are the first barrier that you encounter is the coastline. And uh, billions of people are all around the world live by the coastlines and um, also they benefit from direct or indirect um, uh, ecosystem services such as, for example, uh, erosion control, like regulation of uh, water quality, regulation of, um, of the climate, so of the temperature, basically, and food supply, for example. But uh, coastlines are also uh, really fragile ecosystems. So basically, it's important to study them to, and uh, to study their biodiversity in order to also to better protect them. Which human activities are the ones who have a greatest impact on marine ecosystems? Uh, well, there are several activities that have an impact. For example, there is uh, overfishing. Overfishing is a threat for, uh, for the marine ecosystem because overfishing is basically uh, is taking down predator, great predators like tuna, for example, and it's replacing, and they are being replaced with uh, low trophic organisms, like, for example, jellyfishes. There is also the loss of habitat, so every activity is like urbanization or uh, land, sea, land uh, use or uh, coastline use that is removing part of the, of the habitat is a threat for the, for the marine ecosystem and for the ocean. And also uh, there is the introduction of uh, alien species, so introduction of invasive species. And I think also one of uh, the major threats for the marine ecosystem. So and then another activity is uh, the pollution. So every, every human activity is that release pollutants in the marine ecosystem and in the ocean. And pollution, pollution is not only about like specific chemical compounds that are toxic, but it's also, um, there is also a nutrient pollution. So the, the release of uh, nutrients that cause, that leads to a process called eutrophication. We all know plastic is bad for the environment, but what makes plastic bad for the ocean? Why is plastic a pollutant? Well, basically plastic is a threat because of its uh, persistence and, and durability in the ocean. And uh, it can be dangerous for uh, the macroplastic are a threat because they can uh, kill and injure like sea mammals, turtles, seagulls and uh, also fishes. So basically plastic can break apart into smaller pieces, nanoplastics. And the problem with this is that it can be eaten by plankton organisms and uh, this affect also us and our health. Which organisms are affected the most by our activities? Basically, all the organisms are, effect, are affected by human activities. But there are some organisms that are more fragile and that are more impacted. And also, there are organisms that host uh, a whole ecosystem. So basically, for example, corals and seagrass meadows. Here in the Mediterranean, we have the Posidon Oceanica, basically. They are affected and they are in danger because of the climate change. And uh, uh, it's not about only the loss of a species, but they host like a whole ecosystem, as I said. According to your observations and research, how has climate change affected the ocean? Uh, from my little contribution on the research field, I think that, um, well, during my PhD, I studied mainly the dissolved organic matter and dissolved organic carbon in the water column, that is a huge reservoir of carbon in, uh, in the ocean, and mainly in the Mediterranean Sea. 
and the Mediterranean Sea, we know that as the swimming coast basin is becoming saltier and uh, warmer also, and this affects also the dynamic of this carbon pool with consequences to, to the marine ecosystem and to the ocean uh, global uh, carbon cycle. Okay, so we have a loss in biodiversity. Yeah, of course, say. of course. Basically, it's a little bit uh, complicated to explain, but also the, um, uh, the increase in the, in the duration of the mixed delay, for example, in the summer because of the heat is uh, causing some uh, like uh, unbalance in, this, in, uh, in the dynamics of the soil organic matter. And, uh, and this has an effect, uh, for example, in the bacterial community and then as a cascade on the whole uh, trophic web. What are the objectives of TARA's current mission and what are your conclusions so far? So the objective of the TARA Trek uh, expedition is to study the continu continuum uh, land sea. So for that uh, we want to do a big inventory of uh, all the species from the land to the sea, but uh, also uh, study the um, impact of uh, different kinds of pollutants on uh, these uh, different communities. So for the conclusion, we almost finished the first step of the expedition. That means we almost finished uh, the sampling. So in science, the analyses are quite long. So we need to wait uh, maybe two, three years or more uh, to obtain uh, the first results. What would you advise the audience to do in order to protect the oceans? Are there things that humans do that burden the ocean but we do not consider them as threats? According to me, we should try to stop single-use plastic. It doesn't make sense to use plastic just for one sip or one coffee. Plastic is a problem by itself because it goes in the end in the um, stomach of animal, but it's also a problem with all the additives that are inside. And this, it's the kind of pollution that we can't see, but it's more, even worse than the plastic by itself. What is a day like on board of Tara? A usual day on board, we wake up quite early. The first thing we do after breakfast, of course, is that we launch the scientific instrument, Rosette. It's uh, bottles with sample water. After that, uh, scientists need a few hours to process these samples and then we tow uh, nets with various meshes. After that, uh, usually we eat, very important moment on board, and then we proceed to the next station point. Something very special on board Tara is that we share all the tasks. Uh, for example, the um, household tasks like cleaning the dishes, cleaning the toilets, cleaning the boat, and also keeping the watch, we all share between scientists and seamen. How do you conduct your research every day? So on board Tara, we are six scientists on board. So basically, because it's a small boat, we only have two small laboratories. So we cannot uh, work at six in one laboratory. So we divided all the 60 protocols um, in the six. Like that, uh, we distribute the protocol to share the lab. Is there a scary or a happy moment that you can recall from your life on board? For sure, I can recall many happy moments. Uh, basically, we laugh a lot, a lot together, even uh, when it's uh, hard work that we're doing, even if we don't sleep much. And I cannot recall any scary moments because there are for sure intense moments, uh, maybe with bad weather or when there is pressure to keep the schedule. This interview has come to an end. Maybe Greece is Tara's last stop. But our educational journey at Eugene Foundation keeps going.